Um, you know, when Sava Tatic of uh, Source Fabric invited me to come here, um, he should have known better because he's known, I've known him for 12 years and he knows that I'm a Luddite, that I'm a complete nincompoop when it comes to internet and um, cyber stuff. Uh, so, um, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here because I'm a complete skeptic when it comes to any word that begins with E. Um, you know, e-magazine, e-books, or e-publishing, um, e-chatting. Um, but recently, uh, uh, a young relative of mine got me hooked up into uh, a BlackBerry. And I was always an anti-BlackBerry person. And um, she loaded um, a Facebook and a Twitter into the BlackBerry, so I didn't have to do anything. And I must say, um, it's been only six months, but I have now gone into this technology with the zeal of a born-again Digerati. So um, what I say today comes from the heart of a, a recent convert. And you'll see that I'm not very good with this technology stuff. Um, uh, anyway, I was told that I have to make my presentation visual. So quickly yesterday, just like Mitch did the other day, I went and Google imaged um, relevant uh, illustrations to go with what I'm going to talk about. Um, I hope they fit. Um, but essentially, um, uh, while we, uh, while the media in the West, you know, here in Europe or in America, um, you are worried about the migration um, of eyeballs to the internet. The traditional media in Europe is worried about the, how readership is migrating to the internet. But out there in the subcontinent where we are, the real issue is still that uh, TV is still stealing audiences and advertisers. Um, so if you flip through the 180 channels on the dish these days uh, in India or Nepal or Sri Lanka, you can't distinguish between real news uh, and reality TV. Um, journalism is only this very, very narrow segment of this entire spectrum called the mass media, and that's, that segment is getting narrower, the segment of journalism. Um, and current affairs programs, especially on TV, have turned into this voyeuristic entertainment posing as news. Uh, there is this raucous reporting of trivia uh, there is overkill of, of news items. There's breathless live coverage of issues with five talking heads on the screen at the same time. So you can't tell what the hell is happening. Uh, and recently in a hotel room in India, I flipped through all these Hindi and English uh, news channels. And the main news in all of them was, guess what, cricket. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with the game, um, Asia is divided into two types of countries, uh, ones that play cricket and ones that eat them, right? <laughs> um, so uh, cricket was not just in the, um, um, the main news of the sports program, but cricket was the main number one news in the main news item um, in the lineup. And this went on not just one day, two days, three days, as long as the tournament lasted. And one morning, I think the, the, the anchor finally realized the absurdity of this all. Uh, and, he, and he actually said, now for the rest of the news. <laughs> and, uh, and the last five minutes of a half hour news broadcast was devoted to you know, other news from India and the rest of the world. So you know, I also teach journalism. And all this makes me wonder whether there's any point anymore training college students in mass communications because they just go in and and become uh, instruments in feeding this media industry's voracious appetite uh, for escapist entertainment uh, and masquerading as news and this such content just keeps us ignorant about the real state of our countries uh, it doesn't deal with the structural problems that are keeping us backward, poor. It doesn't throw light on the social injustice, the discrimination, the exploitation that lies at the root of our poverty. 
And at a time when we need it the most, the public service role of media is vanishing. And, and this over-commercialization of media is governed by this unspoken compact between advertisers and publishers that journalists will not be too controversial so that the return so that in return the advertisers will have access to the widest possible audience because if the journalist is controversial the advertisers might shy away so this is what John Pilger uh, the British journalist calls or oh, actually Australian I think uh, calls censorship by exclusion meaning commercialization of media ownership sanitizes the content of what journalists are allowed to report censorship by exclusion is much more insidious because it happens in countries where the news media is actually supposed to be free and the audience thinks it's free readers and viewers are lulled and the TV set turns into a anesthesia machine Um, so media gatekeepers argue that they're just giving the public what the public wants. But do we really know what the public wants? Do we really care what the public needs? Now it's because the mainstream has abdicated its public service role as a defender of media independence that I think there is a new relevance for new media. Online sites, social networking, and citizen journalism complement what the established press can't do anymore, or doesn't. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and they don't touch some of these news items because of state control, or commercialization, or out of sheer laziness or complacency. So you see, uh, new media isn't just a fad. It's a tool that democratizes delivery, takes journalism's, journalism out of the hands of business and government. But it's just a tool. And like any tool, it can be used or misused. We sometimes tend to get carried away uh, by the medium itself. Uh, it, shouldn't be the, it shouldn't be technology for the sake of technology. Uh, we shouldn't be so mesmerized by the gadgets and the the planned obsolescence of our gizmos uh, that we lose track of what this technology is supposed to do for us. Um, and to turn Marshall McLuhan around, uh, the medium is not as important as the message. In fact, the message is the message. Um, <clears throat> so online media and citizen journalism are wake-up calls for the traditional press to reinvent itself, for journalists to relearn what their profession is all about. We need a paradigm shift in the way we do journalism. Half the children in South Asia, this is India, Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh, are stunted because they're undernourished. But look at the covers of our news magazines in the capitals. They're all about how to lose weight. In parts of India, where maternal mortality rate is as high as sub-Saharan countries, the newspapers there all have this tits and ass section. Nearly 200,000 Nepali young women are trafficked to prostitution in India. And yet in Nepal, in my own country, the only sex our newspapers cover are about adulterous film stars. So the trouble begins with what we define as news. Journalism schools have set the criteria for a calamity to make it to the news pages or in the breaking news bar, the people who die have to do so in sufficiently large numbers. They should prefer, preferably be well-to-do. They have to die suddenly and all at once in one place. They have to be good visuals and the victims have to speak English. Which is why perhaps the fact that 150 children in Nepal are killed every day by preventable diseases, preventable infections, isn't news because they are from poor families. They don't all die in one place. They pass away silently, scattered in homes across the country. So the mainstream media has 
not sufficiently upheld the citizens' right to know what is important and is relevant to a majority of them. Oops. Um, <clears throat> and that is why citizens have become journalists themselves. Convergence of technology makes this possible, of course, and is filling a gap that the mainstream media has abandoned. Just about every media conference I've, I've gone to in the last five years has dealt with a debate between <coughs> old media versus new media. <clears throat> this subject has been flogged to death. In fact, let's not get distracted anymore by the debate be between digital versus analog. After all, it's not just an either-all question. We need both. Citizen journalists complement traditional journalists. What is important is not the platform as such. What is important is the content. And the delivery is dependent on the content. You choose the medium that best reaches the public that your message is destined for. Also because we've grown tired of making, uh, talking about digital divide, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Um, things are changing fast, but affordability and accessibility because of language or bandwidth still keep computers and the internet out of reach of most of, most of our citizens. Actually, the digital divide is just the manifestation of the structural inequities within and between our countries. There is the income divide, there is the school divide, there is a the health divide. And these are all problems that the mass media should be in the business of finding solutions for, uh, by improving governance, by making democracies more accountable. See, so in our enthusiasm for digital media, we have to remember that it tends to be an echo chamber. Uh, when you can customize your news feed, subjects or viewpoints that you don't agree with um, can be blocked. Uh, this hardens opinions and works against the politics of compromise that is essential to make a democracy work. So instead of being a bridge, the overconnected internet fragments and compartmentalizes public opinion. Virtual thought ghettos then populate cyberspace. So press freedom uh, in the final analysis is like a rubber band. You have to stretch it to make it work. Media pluralism has to be protected by its constant and maximum application so that journalists, citizens or otherwise maintain our credibility and protect the media's agenda setting role. And um, finally, the real challenge for both new and old media is therefore to number one, be relevant, to enhance our credibility, and to protect our freedoms. This is true whether your delivery platform is the internet, uh, broadcast, or print, whether you work for a newspaper, or we blog, or we tweet or we do all of the above. But those three, three aspects would be, should be at the back of our minds. Are we relevant to the world around us? Are we enhancing our credibility with the content that we provide? And are we protecting our freedoms by its maximum application? Thank you very much.